In today's update of the Aquarium Gallery, there is a lot to cover. We're going to talk about the 2000 gallon aquarium, the inhabitants, as well as the filtration system that I've completed. We'll also talk about the 375 gallon aquarium and where that's it. I also want to talk about the saltwater aquarium and where that's going. And also, clearly, the racking system that is now here, as well as the aquariums that showed up. Again, a whole lot to talk about in today's video, so let's just get started. First and foremost, the 2000 gallon aquarium. Everybody in the tank is doing fine. I've been asked a few times about the plants and lighting, and that's going to happen, or at least should happen this week, or late in the week, or first, first uh, uh, of next week. Uh, but we will be planting the tank, which means I will have to get in the aquarium. I have uh, been considering changing a few things about the tank, and that is the raw. When I feed the tank, I notice that a lot of the uh, frozen shrimp or, you know, scallops or whatever I'm feeding sometimes gets into the large crevices of the rocks and can't be accessed from the fish. Long term, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So to uh, avoid that in the long run, I think what I might do is when I plant the tank, I might end up removing the rocks. But we'll see what happens. I mean, once this entire wood structure is planted and the, and the plants are really grown in, you know, the rocks really won't be adding a whole lot to it. And uh, main concern is making sure water quality stays pristine at any given point. Now, all of the rays, uh, the flower horn, the arowana is always out swimming. The rays are always, you know, constantly active at this point, swimming around the tank, exploring it. Um, but the flower horn itself, as well as the arowana, they got into a bit of a fight one night. Uh, I woke up the next morning and Frank was beat up a little bit. Now, there's a bit of a worry with adding a flower horn, which is a cichlid, to a tank like this. He could attack the stingrays, he could attack the Asian arowana, or vice versa, the arowana could attack Frank. Now, you might be wondering what's the better uh, scenario, and really it's if the arowana attacks Frank. Reason being is, the arowana is an open water swimmer. They don't hide, they don't need caves. In fact, they don't really need anything in their tanks at all. So if Frank were to continuously attack the arowana, he's got nowhere to go. He's just gonna continuously get beat up, stress out, stop eating, and probably eventually die. However, if the arowana lays it down on Frank, the, the flower horn, it's kind of the opposite. Frank will learn his lesson. He's actually, um, he's got a little place he likes to hang out in. And he shares it with uh, one of the rays. They're, the, the two of them are kind of in there together all the time, but Frank will come out to greet me. Um, the lights just came on in here right now. So everybody's just kind of getting uh, used to the lights being on. So uh, ultimately he got a little bit beat up, but it was just the one time the flower, the, the air wanna kind of put him in his place and that was it. I knew that this was going to happen. It was just a matter of time and I'm glad they got it out of the way. Frank can heal a bit, you know, a couple torn fins and you know, a mark on him here and there. Nothing serious, nothing life threatening. The water quality in here is pristine. So he's gonna heal naturally, no problem. But Frank always hides back in behind this rock uh, throughout the day until I tell him to come here. Come here, Frank, come here, come on and see me. Come here. He sees the arowana. He's like, nope, I'm not, I'm not ready to come out, but he'll come out. You know, if it was that bad, he definitely wouldn't come out to see me. But uh, everybody loves Frank. As you can see, you know, the arowana is kind of just still taking, you know, a little swipe at him here and there, but he's not going at him hard. Frank is fast enough and small enough to hide wherever he wants. This will pass. I mean, let's get the, and, and look, the, the rays are in there with them. There's actually two rays in there. The reason being is that some of the food sometimes blows back in behind there, so they're expecting food to be there but the, the other rays are, you know, kind of swimming around. It's just an interesting thing to watch. I mean, Frank is fine. He's coming out. He's responsive. You know, and in time, these guys are all going to settle in nicely, especially once we add the plants into the tank and the, the wood becomes consumed with these plants. It'll be far more lush and uh, be more of a visual block uh, for these animals. And uh, it just be, you know, it's exciting to, exciting to see. But, you know, nothing was going to be perfectly fine through here. I knew that there was going to be some problems. And again, it was just a matter of time before something happens. But I'm glad they got it over with and got it out of their system. You know, uh, I also considered a lot of the names you guys thought about for the arowana. And uh, I think I've picked one. And, uh, I just need a few days to make sure I want to call him that. Because as soon as I start calling him that, thousands of you guys are going to start calling him that. So I'm just gonna let it, um, you know, kind of simmer on my, on, on the, off the top of my head while we decide if that's the name I wanna go with for. But uh, it's definitely a popular name, you guys, a lot of you guys have suggested it. Um, with that said, let's move on to the filtration room and show you guys uh, what's set up there. Downside is there's not a tremendous amount of room to work uh, right now. So uh, again, this is all temporary. We're gonna cover what's going on here in a second. But again, filtration is finished. 
So, I mean, this is an absolute final. What this is, is everything's up and working. I will say that I want to rebuild a new sump. I don't mind it, but I plumbed it uh, n not the optimal way. As you can see right here, I've got a little uh, standpipe plumbed into the tank, and that's gonna take the majority of the flow, and that taller standpipe in the corner up top is gonna take the rest, and that just makes sure it stays quiet. There's about 100 liters or so of fluidized media in the tank, which is biological media. And then we've got a lot of cycled media down here. It's actually packed from this side to the other. That's from my other filters, keeping that cycled for when I set up uh, the 120s. And then just some generic, we've got some filter flush, some sponge, some activated carbon, and some purigen, just to make sure that any impurities of the, in the aquarium are taken out. And eventually I'm just gonna go to mechanical as well as biological. I don't think, uh, I, I rarely use chemical filtration in my aquariums, unless of course there's a reason to, like a brand new tank that might have some impurities in it, uh, as well as a tank that has massive pieces of wood, and I wanna remove those tannins. Drip system is up and running pretty strong though, as you can see, the water just kinda of pouring out. I'll just move it around there. Water's just pouring out, and this is giving me a continuous little water change, diluting the water, making sure that it kinda of stains uh, the same quality at all times. I still haven't had the opportunity to, to, you know, clean up any of my wires or whatnot and make this actually pretty and more functional for me, but it's just been such an amazingly busy week. One of the busiest uh, of my hobby so far, uh, and next week is just going to be even more insane. So, you know, we can come back and make things pretty when we have time, but for now it's all about making sure it's up and running, nothing's leaking, and it's simply just functioning properly. Now a video series I used to do a few years ago was something called How It Works. And I'm going to come back and do a lot of those types of videos on the 2000, like how it works, how it all functions, etc. This is just a generic update. I kind of wanted to do it in this video, but there's just too much to update you guys on today. And uh, I figured let's dedicate certain videos to certain aspects of the gallery and keep the updates as general updates. The racking systems are here now and uh, I know that I said that I wouldn't be unboxing those until maybe next week, but next week on like Monday or Tuesday, there's two more crates of aquariums and racks coming. Right now I only have a three and a half kind of set up, that's all I had, and six aquariums kind of stacked out there. I'm going to have to figure out a way to balance all this and make sure I could put everything together properly, but I'm not putting tanks on the racks until the last one is set up and I can you know, evenly space them and make sure everything is where I want it to be. That's gonna be next to impossible with tanks on it. So um, once everything, all the racks are set up, I'll slide the tanks into it potentially. I'll have to install their backgrounds first. You guys remember those backgrounds over here? I have no room in here because all the backgrounds are kind of piled up in here. All those rocks and um, you know, fake ornaments are in there. And then of course I still have a lot of real wood outside as well as on the way for scaping materials. Um, and then of course plants. I'll be ordering plants when needed. I, I, I don't have anywhere to store them right now, so I just order them as needed. The 2,000 gallon plants, for example, should be here late this week. But uh, I do have a video coming out this Sunday on unboxing all of this stuff and showing you how it was set up and installed and how it all works. But I mean, uh, for the most part, everything is ready to go and ready for an aquarium. Uh, these racks do have holes drilled into the back so I can install all the plumbing. Again, we'll take a closer look on Tuesday where you guys will see how all of this went down. But, you know, it's really exciting to see this finally in the gallery when we walk in the front doors here. And uh, you're starting to get a general idea of what all this is going to look like. So this is about um, head height. This is my eye level. A lot of people thought these were pretty high. They are pretty high, but uh, the reason being is the bottoms, I need the proper sumps in there. So this is about two feet off the ground, then we have two feet of space. A lot of people also said, what about room for scaping? This is plenty, that's about 10 inches of space right there. Worst case scenario, if I want to um, remove these panels, man, do they ever come off easily. Awesome, go back on easily. Custom Aquariums did all this, this is all made possible by them. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to their website so you guys can check it out but I've slowly been unboxing some of the things they've sent, including their uh, siphon stopper, this is a return, um, and then their overflow, this is their H2O overflow, really cool uh, concept. Some of their hosing, which they actually make all of this in the United States, including, including this hose. I found that really interesting, and a lot, I know a lot of you people like to buy you know, locally and support uh, manufacturers within your own country. So those all came from the United States. And then of course, the returns, or sorry, drain hose down here. Um, and there's still so much more. I mean, the lids to the aquariums, the aquariums themselves are out here. 
Um, now all the base backs are painted blue. That was a request of mine. They're all drilled. I have all the plumbing supplies. Again, everything's just kind of stacked in here for now. But uh, with another two crates coming, I've got to get moving on these and, uh, you know, get a lot done. Here's the, uh, the bracing system that I absolutely love. So when I install these 3D backgrounds, before I fill up the aquarium, all I have to do is take off these two bolts here. The whole brace comes off. Then when I, I replace it, fill the tank up, and uh, I really, really love that about it. And uh, they're actually using ultra clear glass as well, so it's low iron. Very, very clear. Um, loved it. These tanks are absolutely perfect. All of them came uh, in mint condition. They're all doing really well. I've, I've literally just stacked them up in here. For now, again, you guys will see on Tuesday how we did all this, but uh, absolutely insane. Just getting them out of the crates took me about four hours, five hours with a friend. Setting the racks up themselves, I'm not lying here, it takes me about five minutes to set up a rack. It's that simple. It's basically just stack them on top of each other, make sure the metal dowels are in their proper places, and you know, that's it. And you've seen how easy it was to do the, uh, the, uh, the covers here. I mean, all very, very simple. I'm trying to create some walking space in here so all of the Ecotech equipment is stored in here. Um, more over there. Oh, let's move on to the Planted Aquarium. Planted Aquarium has been uh, uh, an absolute challenge, and you'll see why when we go downstairs and take a look at that. But uh, you guys will remember the sump system. I ripped open the stand. This is the stand I built. I ripped it open so that we could expose this at any given point. So it's always uh, open. Now it used to have a brace here. I'm going to beef up the stand here so that uh, on the top so that there's no sag. It definitely needs to be beefed up. I just haven't had a chance to do it. And really it's just taking a two by six and uh, you know putting it in place. But we'll see more on that later. But the sump here, oh, and another thing I wanted to do. I installed light strips underneath of it. These are just the LED light strips. I've got two of them here. I just don't have that one turned on right now. But that means we'll be able to, uh, in the evening, this is all gonna be lit up. This was a huge request from all of you guys. You were like, you guys have to, dis you have to display the bashy um, sump that they created. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a work of art in itself. And in a gallery like this, definitely deserves to be displayed. Every time I look at it, I, I always whisper to myself, Damn, that thing's sexy. 375, we're gonna come back to in a second. I gotta talk about the saltwater tank here. You guys will remember, this was the tank that I built for the um, planted tank, then the flower horn was in it. Um, all I did was I painted the back and the bottom with some paint. I've shown you guys how to do that before. This is the stand it was always on. I also painted that. Um, I'm going to drill the back of the tank. I'm going to put a, build a sump for underneath of it. I have no room to move around out here right now though. And that sump system is going to serve uh, like a temporary home for my saltwater aquarium. Everything's gonna come out here. Again, I gotta get all of my fish in aquariums shut down and all the fish out here. No more tanks in the house at all. I didn't build this building to fill it with fish and then still have fish in the house. I think this is gonna be a really cool little cube tank to have until we have time, until we you know get to a 120, which is probably gonna be on the end where the saltwater tanks will go, right by the window. Uh, so that sometimes if I want, I can have some natural sunlight on that tank, which I think will look pretty cool with the coral. I plan to do a reef tank as well as a predator tank. I've always wanted to keep some saltwater predators and we're gonna do it. The saltwater tank though, just keeps getting better and better every day, especially with that light, um, that Aqua Illumination AI Prime, I believe it's called HD. Absolutely love the flexibility of it. I don't even really clean this tank much. I guess it's because I'm moving it here soon. But this is kind of what the coral uh, all look like with them. Um, they're all opened up um, and the fish are doing great. Again, I, I do need to clean this tank up, but um, I'll shut this tank down and I'll store it for future use. However, for now, these guys will all go into the cube tank until we figure out something else. Now back to the 375 gallon planted tank. Welcome to the room that was once my office and now is filled with destroyed aquariums and is an absolute mess. I don't even like coming down here because there's so much work to do. And you guys have to remember that not only am I trying to do the gallery, but I have to change this room into a bedroom. That's what it's being converted into. All tanks have to go. I have to rip this wall down, remove the tank. I'm putting that in storage as well. Um, and uh, move the arowana out to the planted tank, which isn't going to be set up in time. So I'm going to move this out maybe into the utility room there because my utility room is actually gonna become a quarantine and hospital area. Originally, I wanted the hospital and quarantine area out in the gallery, but I thought the best thing to do to avoid cross-contamination is separate buildings. And I don't plan to have a big elaborate um, 
you know, quarantine or hospital system, maybe one or two tanks, probably this tank with maybe a tank underneath of it, and that will be uh, more than enough. I'll have a salt water area and a fresh water area, and that'll be fine. But this tank is now drained. It's kind of ripped apart, ready to go. You guys will remember my shell dwellers. They're all still down there doing fine. They, uh, they're itching to get into a proper tank. Probably can't see them right now. We'll do a proper update on it when the time comes. The 375, however, is ripped apart. It's drained. All plumbing is removed. Sump is drained. Um, the stand is not going in the gallery because it won't fit out of this room. I have to take it apart in here and, you know, essentially throw it out. Throw it out. Uh, I do have to disconnect a little bit more plumbing in here. But to move it out into the gallery is going to prove to be a challenge simply because there's all kinds of tanks out there. So I might have to temporarily put the tanks in the racking systems and then take them back out and, you know, scape them and do as I need. But it's just a matter of timing and me not moving fast enough. I mean, I am only one person. There is a tremendous amount to do down here. I'm used to building one big aquarium once a year. If you guys remember, one big aquarium once a year, a bunch of little projects uh, once a week. I only made one video a week. Now I'm doing three, sometimes four videos a week and doing, you know, building a building, building a 2000 gallon tank, you know, saltwater tank. We're building, a, you know, 375 system, the racking system. You know, it's, it's just a tremendous amount to plan and coordinate and it can't all be done overnight. The Asian Arowana, however, is doing fine. He's uh, probably itching to get out in the gallery and get some more attention. I'll admit I'm not down here enough. I come down here to feed him and do some water changes, but that's pretty much it. He's doing fine though, and um, he's looking pretty good. I think he's gonna look even better once I get him in the, uh, the planted 375 gallon tank. He's also still a good size to add in some tank mates, and I do have some good ideas for what I wanna put in there with him. He's not going in the 375 alone. He will have some tank mates, and you know, even some classic planted aquarium tank mates, because as long as I raise him up with them, they'll be fine in the long run. He might go after them here and there. Arowana is just a tendency to be a predator, but um, with time, they'll get along just like what's happening out in the 2000 gallon. So to summarize the office area, I have to rip this wall down, take the 370 gallon plywood aquarium out of the wall, store the tank. I'm probably gonna have to take the stand apart um, and chuck that. I can't store, you know, a bunch of lumber and a bunch of timber. I, it's just impossible. I also have to have a properly uh, maintained yard for my children and family to actually enjoy and not just turn it into a junkyard. But um, that has to be taken out. Uh, the, the arowana in the meantime is probably going to go in here, which I'll move into that room. The 375 at some point, I hope maybe within a week we move that out. Timelines and, and things of what I'm doing keep changing because things keep arriving or, you know, a little late, a little early, and I just have to keep going with the flow. And on the topic of saving a lot of lumber, this is all of what's left from those racking systems. I took these apart yesterday. This took about four or five hours to do, something like that. And even a lot of you said, you know, that plywood, everything is still really good condition. You know, and it just comes down to storage. I mean, where am I gonna put it? You know, when will I ever use it? You know, it is nice plywood. And if I wasn't in the position of actually having a full gallery right now, I would save it because I'd have a garage where I could put all this stuff and save it. But I just don't have the space. Um, I've sacrificed garage space to have an aquarium gallery. Here's those custom aquarium seamless sumps. Again, I don't have anywhere to put them in the gallery yet. But uh, when time comes, everybody, everything's going to have its own place and its own spot in the gallery. It's all going to come together quite nicely. But again, this is just a quick update of where I'm at with things. I have been tremendously busy. Uh, however, there's, you know, last week I did four videos. Some people are asking me, when am I going to start doing two videos? Some people start doing, when am I going to start doing three? I've been doing three videos a week for the past two months or so. And even once in a while, I'll upload a bit bonus video, but it seems to me like I might have to jump up to four or five videos a week. I don't know when that'll start, but there's just so much to do. And I really don't like doing everything in one video because I have to water it down so much, you know, to, to include it in the vlog. So uh, we'll see what happens. The racking systems are also just tossed into place. They're not lined up properly. They might look a little off, etc. but they're just literally put together pushed over into place, put together, pushed over into place, and kept moving along. Again, this coming Tuesday, so in two days, you are going to see um, the full unboxing and exactly what went down and how it happened. I thought it was really interesting, 
and really fun to do. Um, but on the mention of in two days, you only have two days left before the DIY Fish Keeper shirt starts shipping. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can get yours. So in summary, a lot of things are happening out in the aquarium gallery all at once. And I know that this was a rather fast vlog update. And uh, ultimately there's just too much to talk about. I do plan to break down a lot of these things, including this coming Tuesday when you'll see a real unboxing and a reveal of everything what was in it, how I set up the racking systems, you know, and so forth. So I'll hope to see you guys then. Until then, I thank you for watching. And if this is something you guys enjoy watching and you're not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do so you do not miss any videos.